Hello. Good morning, Jennifer. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you too, John Jefferson, Good. Dr. Good. Bill Bass. Here we are again. It's been a little less than a year, or right at a year, since your last book came out. That's right. You exactly a year. And time flies when you're having fun. You guys have been busy. <laughs> we, we have, yes. How on earth do you put a new book together in one year? That, that's something we're going to talk about before, uh, later, but right now I want to talk about your latest book. Tell everybody what is it called, what is it about, and what can we expect from this latest novel? Well, the book is called Bones of Betrayal, and it's set in Oak Ridge. Uh, it opens with a modern murder in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh, but part of the book happens back during World War II, back during the Manhattan Project the race to build the atomic bomb in World War II. Uh, and so it's a, it's a little bit of a departure for us. It's a more complicated uh, story than the previous books have been. And so that's, that was interesting to work on. It's, I, I think it's the best one we've done. John is a good writer, and it's obvious in this book how good a writer he is. I'll tell you, I was lucky enough to um, get a preview copy and I was racing through uh, already. I mean, just you know, just completely sucked in. So I can't wait to uh, to finish it. I just got it on Friday, so I didn't have much time to, to read much of it. But uh, I can't wait to. I'll start reading today. So. <laughs> we didn't want to give you too much time with it in case you didn't like it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no way. You still be enthusiastic. No way is that possible. <laughs> this, this is the fourth uh, in the Body Farm series. That's right, the fourth book? novel. Right. Uh, we've done two nonfiction books as well. So yeah, we've, we've got six books out there mm -hmm. now, which is kind of amazing. Keep you busy for a while. That's right. The readers. That's so right. you had Carved in Bone, Flesh and Bone, The Devil's Bones, mm -hmm. and now Bones of Betrayal. Well, that's right. Yeah. So Do you see the theme going here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's consistent. There's I, no doubt. I actually wanted to call this one Fallout uh, because it's set in Oak Ridge. You know, some of it involves radiation. Uh, you know, and and the term Fallout would work both you know literally but also figuratively, symbolically. Mm -hmm. Because things that happen in the book are the consequences of things that happened you know, back during World War II. But the sales and marketing people said, no, you got to have bone or bones in the title so that people recognize, oh, yeah, that's part of the body form series. Smart thinking. So, yeah, they're, they're smarter about that stuff than I am. <laughs> you just write them, right? They market them. I just write them. They, they come up with the titles. Well, tell us uh, kind of the basis of uh, Bones of Betrayal and beyond what you just said about the Manhattan Project. Uh, the basic is about a, uh, one of the scientists uh, turns up after 60 something years, right? And that's that kind of what the. That's right. Doc, Dr. Brockton, who is the major character in the book, gets a call from uh, the Oak Ridge Police Department saying they found a body in the swimming pool at the Alexander Inn. And uh, he goes over, and it's in the winter, and the body's frozen into, into the ice. And there's a great sequence in there of hitting the body out. I think it's very, very funny. People would be dying laughing at this, <laughs> even though it's, <laughs> it's a forensic case. And uh, they bring him back in, in the process of uh, the autopsy to figure out who he is. Some interesting events occur uh, that you normally wouldn't think about in an autopsy. Uh, but it leads to a major section of the book. Am I saying too much? Or? No, I don't think okay. so. Okay. And um, in the process of identifying this individual, um, Dr. Brockman uncovers an unknown murder from the Manhattan Air Project. So it would be a murder in 1945. Ah. And uh, it's a really interesting section of the book trying to figure out where this guy is buried. Um, so it's not just one murder now, we're talking about two. Two, that's right. We're talking about one that's 50 years ago. And uh, we have use the latest technology in locating very bodies. And fortunately, uh, we were able to identify it was a person in the military uh, who was killed. And uh, we were able to, to solve that and figure out what happened. That's the beauty of fiction. You can always solve it if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's very exciting. But, but, really, but, excuse me, but really, in all honesty, all the, the techniques used to identify him are accurate. And uh, the government still had the, the records, which the, the military, the military keeps all the records in St. Louis, Missouri. Unfortunately, in, in real life, uh, about 10 years ago, they had a fire that burned many of the records. 
Mm. And uh, so when you go to look for somebody, if you know they've been in the military, they, their record should be in the file in, in St. Louis. You don't know whether they were burned or not. And fortunately, um, in the fictional book, his, his records weren't burned. So. These would be things like dental records, which mm -hmm. would you know, uh, show fillings and teeth and so on, so, which would be enough to let you identify the body of a soldier from mm -hmm. 60, 65 years ago. Mm -hmm. Wow, so that's the technology back then too. The, everything's on computers now, you know, so right. it certainly helps. Well, I tell you what I think is really cool and, and about your books is all the local ties. You know, you'd be reading and it'll be talking about driving down I-40. I've been there, you know, or how, how great it is that this story is about a bridge. There's so much history. And people that, that haven't lived here for years and years and years, you know, I think that a lot of this old history is just kind of buried. So I think it's really neat that you've kind of resurfaced some of this history and you've uh, regenerated some new, in, some new interest in, in the past. One of the things that, that astonishes me is that when I talk to people in their 20s or even in their 30s, some of them have not heard of the Manhattan Project. They don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's like not knowing that we've landed on the moon. That was the, that was the biggest endeavor in human history ever, mm -hmm. before or since. Uh, this uh, is the, the Oak Ridge thing, the not landing on the moon. Right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. building you know, the, the Manhattan Project was the biggest human project ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was so ambitious, it was you know, it was set at a time when the, literally the fate of the world was hanging in the balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and the atomic bomb changed history uh, forever. It was this watershed moment mm -hmm. in human history. And, you know, people have to know about that. People have to remember that. Mm -hmm. And the stories are just so amazing. The photographs are so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that were taken of, of, of a bridge during the war. Uh, there's this amazing photographic record of what was a super secret project. You know, I was looking uh, at the pictures too, and there's a sign. And uh, my husband works in Oak Ridge, and he says he thinks he saw that. What you see here, what you do here, what you hear here, when you leave here, let it stay here. I thought that was a, a neat way to say that. There were, I, I worked in Oak Ridge back in the 80s and the early 90s mm -hmm. and they still had those billboards uh, you know at every highway or road going out of in and out of town mm -hmm. they had those security billboards reminding you you know there was I remember one where it was just a picture of a guy with his finger up to his lips mm -hmm. you know and all I said was shh <laughs> <laughs> for such a big secret it's really great that there was so much pictures, so much documentation and stuff like that, because I know a lot of times on the secret stuff, you know, the public doesn't get to see that, you know, now that this is a piece of history. Uh, there's, uh, there's tours and things, you can go do the Secret City tour and stuff like that, which I have not done, yeah. which I need to do. Which you do need to do, yeah. We can uh, hook well, you up with the people who can give you the Secret City really? tour. We can. I'll hook your people up with my people. That's right. Okay, that will be great. Yeah, that would be <laughs> I'm my people. <laughs> I, I hope, from one of your comments just a little bit ago, I hope that there are people in Oak Ridge who uh, will appreciate the history and will inform some of the older people that may not know. People that have moved away mm -hmm. need to know about this. And this is a good history. Mm -hmm. uh, there are things written just recently uh, that I wanted John and Eddie, let's, let's send a copy of the book over because they they don't know the whole whole sequence of events. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we're about to learn. This must have been a lot of fun for you to write. It was a lot of fun to write. And there's, uh, I mean, the, the story is more complicated because there are stories within the story. Mm -hmm. We have a character who, who, at the modern time, you know, when the, when the action is really set, you know, she's almost 90. And she works you know, in the Y-12 plant during the war, operating one of these Calutrons, the machines that separated uranium from mm -hmm. the atomic bomb. She's one of the, what they call the Calutron girls. Mm -hmm. you know, and they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. But they just knew they were controlling these dials and knobs, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping the needle set at a certain place, you know, right as here. the machine ran. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but the way we get back into the World War II parts of the story is through stories that this character named Beatrice tells. Mm -hmm. these memories of hers, uh, some of which are reliable and some of which are maybe not so reliable. Oh, uh, another twist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but there are also, also parts of that character, this old, old woman, mm -hmm. who was, you know, a beautiful woman, a beauty as, as a young woman. Uh, there are parts of her that are based on my grandmother, uh, 
behind some of the life that she led. Mm -hmm. Because she led a, a very interesting but also a very difficult life and parts of it were very sad. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of what I wanted to do in writing this book was to honor my grandmother.